Okay, so in today's setup guide, I'm going to be showing you how to get the very best settings out of Dolphin Emulator for Windows PC. So we're going to be looking at upscaling games from native resolution right up to 4K and beyond. I'm also going to be showing you how to use different settings in order to take away rough edges and also different settings to make your GameCube collection look the very best possible. So anyways, this is GameCube Emulator and Video Setup Guide. Check this one out. <laughs> Okay, before I start today's little setup guide for enhancing your Nintendo GameCube collection using the very awesome Dolphin emulator, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content like this one you're watching today. It helps my channel a lot, plus you get notifications daily as I release new content. So we're looking at improving your GameCube collection and actually enhancing things so we can actually play GameCube games in up to 4K resolution. So what we're going to do is just open up Dolphin and I'm using the latest version of this as of today. So within Dolphin for this little guide I'm using the game F-Zero GX. So what I'm going to do first is actually go into graphics and from graphics you will see under backend and adapter that we can actually select these whilst you're running your game you won't be able to select these so if you're going to do what i'm about to do make sure your game is actually turned off so firstly let's explain back end if you attempt to load a gamecube game and you're presented to a black screen it's always going to be under your back end now as standard this is using the vulcan back end and by using this particular back end i can open up my adapter which is the geforce rtx 3050 if I go to backend and I use something like OpenGL, you'll find that I can no longer use my graphics card. And of course, we want the graphics card in order to make your games look best. So let's just stick with Vulcan and select my RTX card. Next thing we need to look at is aspect ratio. So of course, GameCube games were made in an era where 16 by 9 games wasn't really a thing yet or if they were a thing there wasn't many of them so just remember gamecube is going back to the generation of playstation 2 and the original xbox so what we can do is by putting this on the 416 by 9 you will find that some games will look overly stretched so what i suggest doing really without that stretch look is actually making sure to put to either force 4 by 3 or just simply leaving it to auto. Next thing we want to do is obviously start GameCube games in full screen. So just make sure start in full screen is checked. Otherwise, whenever you open up a GameCube game, you'll see that they open up in window mode. Next thing to check is VSync. Now VSync is especially important for 3D rendered games. VSync is going to take away screen tear, which gets a little bit irritating after a while. You'll get to see a little wave, a very noticeable wave, uh, go through your gameplay. So make sure VSync is checked. Next thing we need to look at then, as enhancements, is actually go to Enhancements tab. Internal resolution, native, means that this is going to display how it was meant to look when it was released. The GameCube games were released. So a very shoddy resolution, and yes, it's an old console, but we can make this look so much better today, and that's the point in this video. Now, technically, we can go up to 12 times native for 8K. This is going to be very draining on your computer, and it's going to likely blow up your computer if you're running a potato. So even if you can push this to 720, 1080p, or even 4K, it's a massive benefit, and that's obviously a major upscale from the native resolution of 640 by 528. So for this, I'm gonna just put this onto 1080p. Now, anti-aliasing is your next option. Now, just like internal resolution, if you're running a potato computer, by bumping this up to eight times MSAA or even eight times SAA, it's going to blow up your computer. If you're running a potato computer, even if you're running a higher end gaming PC, applying a lot of these max settings, are going to be very wearing you'll likely see choppiness and lagginess so whichever you go for what anti-aliasing is going to do is take away rough edges on textures and gameplay elements 
So to smooth things out, we apply anti-aliasing. So I'm gonna just apply, say two times MSAA. Now texture filtering is a very nice option in order to clean up texture. So let's say for example, you're playing a game and it's got a field or a piece of grass. Now normally that would be presented as slightly blurry. Now by putting texture filtering on, this can actually define or rather make those textures, that patch of grass much more defined. So just like the other two options, internal resolution and anti-aliasing, texture and filtering is gonna be very hardwareing on your hardware. And just remember a combination so far of adding all these upgrades, as it were, is going to be very pressuring on CPU and GPU. So again, even if we can go up to say four times, it's still a major improvement over the original look of GameCube games. I'm gonna just put this onto two times anastrophic. Now under post-processing effects, if we just drop this down, we're going to find lots of different effects that we can add to GameCube games. Now for whatever reason you might want it for, we got 16-bit and we got 32-bit. So what this means is that we can actually make GameCube games look like they were made for the 16-bit era, which is of course the Sega Mega Drive and the Super Nintendo. If we put it to the 32-bit, then of course, GameCube games are then going to start looking like Sega Saturn or PlayStation 1. So these options just here are pretty much just mad options, such as Acid Trip. So I'd imagine by applying Acid Trip, you're going to get that very psychedelic 90s era looking dance trance video style thing. So personally, I don't use these, but if you want to experiment, it won't harm your computer. Next thing I suggest doing is force 24-bit color. What this is gonna do is add more color to your games. So if we next move on to disable fog, what this is going to do is draw distance. So in your early, say, FPS games, uh, say Medal of Honor, um, even some Call of Duty games, which was released during this era, you'll notice if you're looking into the distance, you don't see the distance, there's actual fog. Things are often black and things are often gray. The point is, is that when these games were made, the technology wasn't there to allow developers to make the background more defined by adding trees, that type of thing. So what we can do is disable fog. And what this is going to do is, like it says, make distant objects more visible by removing the fog. Another really cool feature we got with Dolphin Emulator today is the ability to render games using HDR post-processing. So if you're using a screen or a TV, as long as it supports HDR as well as a graphics card has got HDR support, then check HDR post-processing. And I'm also going to mention here, if you do have HDR screen as well as a graphics card, you can actually adjust the brightness of it as well. If we just go to color correction and configure, you're going to find HDR just there. So HDR paper white nits. So if you just boost this up and obviously the higher up you're going to send white nits, obviously it's going to become unplayable. You're not going to be able to see anything, but the option is there if you want it to. So with these settings all applied, I'm going to just boot up F-Zero GX and check out how it looks. So awesome gameplay and awesome visuals. You might notice a little bit of lag there and that's not down to my hardware, but sometimes on Dolphin Emulator, games, particular games such as this one, isn't 100% compatible with Dolphin, which means some might lag and this is an example. But other than that, those settings will generally give you what I've just showed you. Now, like I say, we can use 16 by 9 to give it more of a full screen display, but by doing this, you're then going to stretch the image. So if I go back up to graphics and back over to general, if I put this on to 4 16 by 9 and close and open up the game again.
So as you can see there, it certainly looks really nice, but it does look stretched. But some of you might actually like that look rather than the uh, typical 4x3 look. So what I'm going to do to end this video is actually show you how this looks in Dolphin Emulator with none of these settings applied. And you will see for yourself the massive difference which applying these video settings makes. <laughs> So that's it for enhancing your GameCube games using Dolphin Emulator Enhancement settings. So as we can see there, and definitely by the end video, that default settings looks pretty bad compared to when I upscaled it. So anyways, if you liked today's video, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. And just remember, every time I release a new video, you will get notified and you can watch awesome videos like this one that you've seen today. So join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.